Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Christian. If you're new here, I have a 2009 Nissan 370Z along with a 2018 Infiniti Q50. So if you're interested in watching more videos, make sure to consider subscribing. But in this video, we're going to be specifically talking about the Infiniti Q50, what performance mods you should actually do to this car. I've actually been wanting to do this video for a really, really long time. I just never really had the chance to because I get this question all the time. Like, I'm not even going to lie. There was a point in time where I was getting this question every single day on my Instagram asking what performance mods you should do first. And I really want to talk about this in this video today. So I don't want to waste you guys' time. It is getting pretty dark already. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and start off with doing a walk around of the car. That way you guys can see how it looks and what's actually done to it at the moment. So here's my 2018 Infiniti Q50. It's kind of dirty right now. I did wipe it down, but it's still not fully clean. But here's how it looks. I do have a full mod list on this car, so if you guys are interested in checking that one out, just in case you're interested in watching what's actually done to this car, there's a few additional stuff that I do have done to it that I didn't go over in that video, but it's nothing big, so it should be pretty much everything that I have on the car at the moment. And that video is actually getting really close to 100k views, so make sure to check that one out. I'm really grateful for how many people are actually watching and how many people love this platform. But let's go ahead and focus on the first mod that you should do to this car. And here we have the AMS heat exchanger. It's the one that says Infinity, not AMS. It's the same exact thing. Now, the reason that you want to get a heat exchanger is because the car does actually get really hot and it gets heat soaked um, when you don't have a heat exchanger without even pushing the car, especially if you live in a hot climate like I do. I live in Arizona. You're talking 120 temps or 110, depending on if it's summer. I would just be driving normal and the car would feel really sluggish. It would pretty much slow the car down. It wouldn't perform as much. And I know for a fact that there are some tuners that will not even tune your Q50 without getting a heat exchanger. That's how important it is and that's how vital it is to be making sure that the car is safe and is performing well. Keeping the car temps down when it comes to this engine and this platform. There is a lot of options available. There's Mishimoto, um, you have AMS, you have, um, I believe there's one called PLM. AMS did recently come out with a new model, which is a bigger heat exchanger, which is more for racing purposes or track purposes. So if you're interested in picking that one up, I would highly suggest it, but you do have to do some modifications in order to make that one fit because it is a lot bigger. They all have different price ranges. So just depending on the one that you go with, I know that this one right here, if the price is not changed, it was about, I think it was $7.99. I picked it up, it was actually on sale and I got it for about $600. So I save $200 at the moment, which is quite a bit. And then you have Frozen Boost, which is actually the cheapest option, but it's actually pretty small. It's kind of like a universal kit. So you do have to make it fit. You have to do your own like um, cutting your hoses and everything, make sure it's all on there good. Uh, just depending on what you go with, you can get some cheap ones that work perfectly fine, or you can get more expensive ones that are direct bolt-ons. You don't have to really make any adjustments. Use your existing hoses like this one, and then you're perfectly good. Now, for the second mod, it's going to be very debatable. It actually depends on what you want for this car. If you just want a JB4, you don't want to actually tune it. I would recommend getting a JB4 at this point because you have the heat exchanger, so it's going to perform very well. And then you can just do your other mods later on down in the future. The JB4 does make it extremely fun if that's what you want. Now, let's say you don't want a JB4, you actually want to tune the car. I would go ahead and wait and get a few more parts. So, now that leads me to the third mod. So if you don't plan on getting a JB4, I would highly suggest upgrading the exhaust, upper down pipe, lower down pipe, your white pipe, mid pipe, and your axle back. So just like the VHR platform, um, you do have a full exhaust. What you call in a VHR is a test pipe, and a Q50, which is a VR30 platform, you have what is called a down pipe. So you have your upper down pipe and you have your lower down pipe. You also have the option of a full down pipe, which replaces the both of them. It's pretty much going to combine it into one and make it one full thing in order to go all the way down and go into your um, white pipe. If you do plan on upgrading to a, a full down pipe or just upgrading the upper down pipe, you may have some issues. I cannot completely confirm that yet, but there are some reviews of people saying that I may over boost. I have an AMS three inch lower down pipe along with a megan white pipe it goes from a 2.5 inch to a 3 inch and i have a 2.5 cap back all the way down with one resonator right in the middle you can kind of see the exhaust there pretty much goes from the megan white pipe it connects into one then it's one straight pipe and then it separates into two again with one resonator right in the middle i'll throw in a sound clip that way you guys can hear how it sounds
The exhaust sounds pretty good in my opinion. It does have a little bit of rasp when it comes to straight piping the exhaust. I have one resonator so it does sound a little bit better. But you will get rasp at about 3k. It's kind of weird with this platform because it's not like the VHR platform. Usually with the VHR you get like rasp all the time. But with this platform because of the turbos it does kind of silence a little, a little bit. It's kind of weird. But like at 3k I'll get a rasp. And then like after I reach higher RPM it goes away. There's quite a lot of options available when it comes to the exhaust. So you have AMS, like I said, I have on my car. I believe there's Megan, which is one of the most popular ones and the cheaper ones, ranging about $100. And then you have other options as well for the up or down pipe. I'll link them down below. I'll show you guys slides and videos of which ones you can pick from. And or you can actually go with the full cap back. My favorite cap backs for this car are going to be the HKS cap back along with the Motordyne. They are really up there in price, so they are pretty expensive. For the other exhausts, they're okay. But in my opinion, those are the best sounding ones. I know there's options like Arc Fast Intentions. There's a few others available as well that you can pick from. The next mod is going to be two, but I'm going to put it as one. And that's going to be wheels and tires. If you want to put power to the ground, you need to make sure that you're upgrading your tires. And that you're also upgrading your wheels to be able to put a wider tire on there. Uh, right now I have Sport Rays from a 370Z. They are rears all around, meaning that they're 19 times 10. Here's a Fitment. I have a 285 in the rear with their 35 sidewall. And then I have a 275 in the front with a 35 sidewall as well. It looks really good. It looks really flush. It's honestly way better than the 9.5 in the front because it sticks in quite a bit. But with this one, it looks pretty dope. You have to be really careful when you're picking out wheels for this car. Um, when it comes to wheels, you usually have to pick a really high offset in order to make them fit. The Sport Rays are a 35 offset. And if you want to run like an 11, you have to go with like a 50 offset. You really have to mess with the numbers when it comes to this platform because not a lot of wide wheels will fit on this car because of the body shape, width, and the diameter. So it's really difficult to be able to choose something that's really wide to make it look really good. You're really limited on what you can pick. But once you find that correct offset, you can find something that's going to look really dope and really meaty. The wheels are not actually black. They're in magnesium blue. I had them painted. It's really hard to see right now of how dark it is but you can kind of see the hint of blue now a question that i see a lot in the forums is what kind of wheels can i get that will clear my big brake kit and honestly it has a lot to do with the wheel design and also the offset the offset does play a part in it and how far it's going to stick out but you also have to keep in mind the wheel design how it's shaped if it's going to clear the wheel so for example like this one if this wheel would have went straight ahead it would have just hit the caliper right here but because the wheel design curves like this it's going to clear that brick brake kit and i won't have any issues i would highly suggest testing out your wheels before you actually purchase them if you can that way you're 100 percent sure that it's going to clear now for the next one i would highly suggest lowering the car it makes a huge difference it just gives it a whole different stance on how it looks it looks really dope a question that i get a lot when it comes to lowering the car is should you go springs or should you go coilovers in my honest opinion most people that do purchase springs eventually go to coilovers you can do springs if you just want to lower the car but the amount of work that actually goes into installing them is quite a bit and in my honest opinion i wouldn't go ahead and just install springs and put the stock suspension back on there if you're going to do this by yourself i would highly suggest doing coilovers because it is a lot of work especially if you have a high mileage car there's a good chance that those shocks that you are replacing with springs might be going out very soon changing it out to coilovers then you pretty much know that you have new suspension it's going to last a while so that's my opinion on springs versus coilovers. Of course, with coilovers, you have a lot more adjustability. For example, when I installed my coilovers on this car, I was able to adjust it up and down to where I wanted it for the fitment. If you have springs, you're just going to drop it that inch and you're done. There's nothing else you can do about it. It's going to stay like that. Coilovers is honestly going to be the best way to go. You're going to be able to adjust your ride height. Or if you even want to adjust the dampening, you do have that capability to be able to do that. You'll save the money in the end. And I think you're going to be really happy with coilovers instead. Bags are also an option, but of course they're more expensive. Not a lot of people are willing to put 4K into bags. There is quite a few options available. I'll list them down below again on what you can actually pick from. There is BC coilovers. You have one of the more expensive ones, which is RSR. They're pretty expensive. I believe they're like... I think it's like $2,000, over $1,000 just to be able to purchase those. You also have HKS available. Now, another mod I would actually suggest is going to be in the engine bay. And that would be a oil catch can. The oil catch can is going to help out a lot. 
Um, it might even save the motor one day because the oil catch can what it's doing is pretty much collecting any oil from going into places where you don't want it to go in order to pretty much save the engine keep it a lot cleaner i have seen so many videos of people that have an oil catch can and once that take once they take it off it's like halfway full and that's actually quite a bit i do plan on getting an oil catch can in the future i don't have one just yet but just stay tuned for it i know it's something that i do want to do for this car so now that you have your full exhaust you have your heat exchanger, you have tires that can grip and grab onto the ground to support the amount of power that you're putting into it, wider wheels. Then at this point, you can go ahead and get a tune. If that's as far as you wanna go with the car, a tune is gonna really help out a lot with this platform. Um, if you have a Lux like I do, it's making 300 horsepower. And once you get a tune, you could easily be making at least 450 wheel torque. So it's quite a bit, it's a huge difference. You're talking about 150 horsepower more. It does really change out the feel of the car, make it a lot faster. Like you guys may think that it's just a small difference, but it does actually make a huge difference on this platform. It's a lot more enjoyable. With the tune, you can do a, quite a few things. You can check the oil temps, you can check your boost levels. It's a great tool to have as well if you, if you get a check engine light. I know the Accutech tool does actually tell you um, what your check engine light is for, what's actually going on, you can clear it. It's just so useful to be able to have a tune like that. Now, let's say you don't want to go ahead and do a tune yet and you actually want to up the performance a little bit more on this platform. The high pressure and low pressure fuel pump along with the intakes. Now, the intakes, you can do it at any time, but from the reviews and what I've seen, intakes do not actually do a lot for this car unless you go with AMS. Every other intake that I've seen for this platform, I've seen a lot of reviews that the stock ones actually perform a little bit better than the aftermarket ones do. Now, I've had these AMS intakes for a while. They actually didn't do much for the car when I put them on, but it does add a nice growl to the car. When you're flooring it, you can actually hear them sucking in air. So it does sound really good if that's what you really care about. The reason you want to upgrade the fuel pump or the high pressure and the low pressure fuel pump is so you can go ahead and run E85 properly without having really any issues and to be able to withstand the E85 oxygen that you're putting in there. Once you add E85, I know the car does actually increase a lot in horsepower significantly because it is a forced induction platform. So you will get a good number out of that. I've seen some people that are running 500 horsepower really close to it when they go ahead and run E85. Usually if you don't run E85, you're looking at about 450. Now the very last mod that I'm gonna talk about is gonna be one that a lot of people won't probably do, but it's still there, it's still available, and that's gonna be upgrading the turbos. You do have pure turbos available and you have RT turbos available. So those are the main ones that I know of. I know that there are some manufacturers that are currently making a custom setup for this car to be able to run like Garrett's and stuff like that. There hasn't been too much information leaked from what I know of, but of course there is gonna be more options available in the future. The reason I say that is because as you guys know, if you guys are staying updated to what Nissan is doing with the new 400Z, they're going to be pretty much putting out a new car that may most likely have the vr30 in it i'm not sure if it's confirmed yet but from the pictures that i have seen on that platform i'm sure that they're going to be transitioning that motor over to the 400z so if they do that just imagine the amount of aftermarket support that's going to be available for these platforms after they put out the 400z because don't get me wrong the infinity q50 is cool and all but the amount of support that you have with the z platform is insane there's so many enthusiasts out there that love the z platform so many more mods that they're going to be making for this platform that's going to make it insane it's quite impressive for what it is and i think it's only going to get better within the next few years once this new platform comes out that's going to be pretty insane this car really does stand out when you put it up against other competitors like the v8s camaros things like that i've actually driven a v8 camaro before i've also driven a few rts out there this car does actually pack a punch when it comes to the performance it does actually put you back in your seat compared to those v8s out there that i've seen there's so many things that i didn't really talk about that you guys should consider doing for example, sway bars, motor mounts, transmission mounts. There's so many things available. Go ahead and check out Concept Z Performance. You can also check out other websites as well. I'll link them all down below. But if you go onto the website, you can select your Q50 and 3.0T. There are many options available for you to be able to choose from. That way you can look through everything to see what they have. But other than that, it is a great platform. A lot of people love the car. Once you have most of these parts installed, you should be able to beat most V8 muscle cars out there. Uh, for example, Camaro SS's. I've driven a Camaro SS, they are pretty heavy, so they're on the heavy side, so you do have an advantage. You should also have a lot more horsepower once you go ahead and do that tune and everything. You should be easily around 450, depending on the models that you do, and if you go E85, then you should be about 500. 
especially once you get that turbo those turbo upgrades you should be making close to 600 if not over so just keep that in mind um these cars are a little bit lighter than those v8s because they're a lot heavier um, especially charger rts scat packs those are pretty quick as well but you should be able to beat them off the line if you do put it up against one you will have trouble of course with the hellcat those are making like 700 horsepower so if the car is not going to be that fast unless you upgrade the turbos once you upgrade those turbos you'll be looking like at 600 horsepower so then at that point you should be able to beat a hellcat i've seen a few videos of um q50s with upgraded turbos that have raced the hellcat and they actually do pretty good and actually beat them by quite a bit so um, you, know, you do have to put into consideration the amount of weight that those cars have, so it does slow them down. Our Q50s are not that heavy. They're like around just a little bit over 3K. It's not that much heavier than a 370Z, so it does help it out a lot. And those other cars are weighing over 4K, so that's quite a huge difference in weight. Hope you guys found this video really useful for those of you that are interested in modding your car. If you have any suggestions or anything else that you want to add, make sure to put it down in the comments below. Any positive feedback is greatly appreciated from any of you guys. I really like when all of you guys in the community are really posting up things that you feel like are really useful or can help others. So make sure to put it down in the comments below. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.